So here's how to avoid proof of code so that a, even a baby, an angel baby can understand it. Number one, be aware that you are responsible for the code that you're writing. So take your time. You wouldn't go to the doctor and say, hey doctor, can you just like hurry up, fix my brain, open my head and just do whatever you need to do? No, you, you need to go to the doctor. You need to wait for him to give you a diagnosis. And he probably wouldn't open your head right away. He would take his time to give you a diagnosis. And just like that, uh, you shouldn't skip the important parts either. You need to be a professional. You need to tell the person that's selling you to go fast, hey, this is what's going to happen if you go fast. We're, you're going to accrue a lot of tech debt. It's going to make it harder to go back and fix things in, the, things in the future. We just can't move that fast. It's, unless you want poo-poo in your hands, we can't move that fast. Number two, use meaningful names. So here's a little snippet of code. I would like one of the non-technical, even one of the technical people to try to tell me what this formula is doing. And I don't want you to tell me it's multiplying and adding things. Just tell me, is this the formula for string theory? Is this the formula for how to, I don't know, measure the heat that comes out of a computer? Does anyone have a clue? Well, no, because it says SDFG. What does that mean? Exactly. Good. I'm so happy you said that. So again, going back to the point that I was talking about, use meaningful names. I'm going to go to the next slide and I want someone to guess now or yeah, guess what the code is doing. So what is the code doing? Anyone's got a clue? Count calories in a sandwich. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Whoa. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> exactly. So meaningful names are extremely important and you have no idea how many times I've seen the pattern of people writing code like this, which is poo-poo code. And you have to try and guess what every single variable there, A, B, C, D, is doing so that, so that you can in the end refactor to something like this. And trust me, going from this to this takes sometimes even hours uh, just in those few lines of code. Imagine how long it takes on thousands of lines of code, a lot of time. So point number three, use the power of variables. We had a lot of variables on the last slide, but you're gonna, you're gonna be a little bit amazed with this uh, next exercise. I have a, lot of, uh, a few numbers down there. Bread times two plus ham times four plus lettuce times 10. Does anyone have a clue what those crazy magical numbers are? Portions, that is correct. But most people didn't answer. And that's because it's hard to guess what, what those things are. So again, we go to the next slide and we see a lot more code, but this time you know what those magical variables are. We put the number two in a variable called slices of bread. We put the variable four in a variable called slices of ham. We put the number 10 in a variable called servings of lettuce. At the bottom, lines 11, 12, and 13, we just multiply calories in bread times slices of bread. So calories in bread 50 times slices of bread two is equal to the total calories in bread. Make sense to everyone? Perfect. And at the bottom, we just add all of the total calories to come up with the calories in a sandwich. This might seem like a lot of code to you guys, but in the end, it's a lot more readable. It's like writing a book for a baby, basically. You wouldn't try to use vocabulary like in the Bible or like in some of those crazy advanced books in a baby's book. You want to make sure that code is super readable and understandable, no matter how many lines it takes.